2,500 years ago in ancient India, to the north of the sea and south of the snow mountains, after observing human suffrage, a Sakayan prince named Gautamaya Siddharatra decided to renounce the throne of king and left his family to seek the truth that can liberate beings from suffering. After many years of ascetic practices, he finally came to a Bodhai tree by the Narajana river. Seated on kusha grass he made for himself, he then touched the earth and made a vow. I would rather die than get up from the seat if I fail to attain enlightenment. As the phosphor rose in the sky, all the attachments, discrimination, sorrows and ignorance disappeared from his mind forever. At that very moment, Bhutadhana Siddharatra achieved Buddhahood. With darkness dispelled, the earth was fully exposed to the brilliant sunshine. The perfectly enlightened Buddha, Shakyamuni, came under the Buddha tree and began his journey of preaching for more than 40 years. He taught the truths he had realized and led people onto the paths to ultimate freedom. To the north of ancient India, there is a serene and mysterious plateau of snow mountains where Buddhists and Bodhisattvas have prophesied to be the main seat of Bodhisattva Avokishavara, the Tibetan Plateau. More than a thousand years ago, depending on the inconceivably profound origination, upon the invitation from Tibetan king Trisong Jutsen, Two great Indian masters, Shantara Kishata and Pamashambhava, came to Tibet successfully and founded the pure lineage of Nyingmapa, the ancient translation school of Tibetan Buddhism. Pamashambhava, Shantara Shika, and Trisong Jutsen were later honored by people as the Holy Three of Masters and King. From then on, the sublime teachings realized by Buddha Shakyamuni himself were widely flourished in the snow land. Dzogchen, the Great Perfection, is the foremost teaching of the Nima school. It enables ordinary people to attain Buddhahood within one lifetime. As Guru Pamashambhava has foretold, when iron birds flew in the sky and iron horses ran on the ground, Tantra teachings would widely spread all over the world. Dzogchen masters, Samantha Bradra, Vajrastava, Garab Dorji, Manjushumitra, Sri Shinha, Jana Sutra, Vimalamitra, Pamashambhava, Trisong Detsen, Vairo Chana, Yeshir Tsoga, Longchen Rabjang, Rikchin Jimmy Lingpa. Jimmy Gauri Nyogu, Patrul Rinpoche, Jamyang Keche Guangpo, 
Nipham Limpuche. Choji Yishin Nobu Jimmy Punsok. In 1980, Choji Yishin Nobu Jimmy Punsok, the greatest of contemporary masters of Nenuma school, established the world's largest Buddhism academy, the Cedar Narong Five Sciences Buddhism Academy, thus turning a new chapter of Buddhism Renaissance in modern times. For the past two decades, La Rome Buddhism Academy has established itself as a college of pure discipline and lineage transmission. Like rivers run to the sea, disciples of all schools and from different places have been gathering here. Just like what was recorded about the Nalandu University in ancient India. The academy has turned out numerous outstanding Buddhist teachers who are turning the Dhamma wheel and benefiting all these sentient beings all over the world. Buddhist teachings can only be passed down through unimpaired lineage transmission. Kandro Mensual Rinpoche, niece of Choji Yeshin Norbo, has always been studying and practicing under the guidance of Choji Yeshin Norbo. Precise prophecies on her previous life, Kandro Menjia Huandro, can be found in the fundamental tantra of Minjushri and other tantras. A lot of Indian and Tibetan masters, including Joji Yeshinobo, have also made prophecies on her. Joji Yeshinobo once said, My niece Mintsua possesses all the three precepts that has realized the innermost essence of Drodzin. Now as the new president of the Larong Buddhism Academy, Mintsua Rinpoche continues upholding the true teachings of Buddha, guiding disciples to the ultimate liberation. From Samantha Bhadra, to Choji Yishin Nobu. Generations of lineage masters have protected the Tantra transmissions unstained by keeping their vows unbroken. In 1986, Kempo Shirab Jombo passed the examination and was awarded the Kempo's degree by Choji Yishin Nobu. In the same year, during the one month long Kalachakra Empowerment Dharma gathering, as a significant origination, Choji Yishin Nobu designated Kenko Sharab Jombo and three other Dharma sons of him as his successors to assist in performing the rituals. It was at this Dharma gathering that Yoji Yeshinobo solemnly declared in front of all the participants that Sharab Jombo and the three other Georgian practitioners would become great lineage holders of Nyingma tradition. In January 2004, Jimmy Punsok Rinpoche passed away into Nirvana. In 1982, 19-year-old Sherb Jombo was studying under the guidance of Kempo Perma Tse Wang. One day, when he heard about the merits of Choji Yeshin Norbu Jimmy Punsok, he felt like a lost child hearing the name of his father. Firm devotion and faith emerged in his mind, he was strongly aspired to visit the great master. At the end of 1984, with a recommendation letter from Kempo Prema Tse Wang, Shirab Zombo started his pilgrim journey to Larong. It was extremely cold in winter at the Tibetan plateau, and the family were too poor to provide him with enough food and clothing. The mountainous way made the journey even harder. But his eagerness to see the master was to be discouraged by nothing. Faith and devotion decides one's future. Choji Yeshin Norbo seemed to be expecting the arrival of this disciple. When Shrib Zombo finally arrived at Lurong Buddhism Academy after going through the test of ice and snow, he was warmly welcomed by Choji Yeshin Norbo, whose affection and warmth immediately swept away all the sufferings happened to Shrib Zombo. He seemingly saw the future for this young Lama. Although it was the first time young Sherb Jombo saw the master, his devotion was already so strong that he found it impossible to move at all. 
He knelt before Shuozhi Yeshin Norbo and supplicated, Please kindly teach me the ultimate tantric teachings to attain enlightenment within this life, for I cannot afford living here long. While Shuozhi Yeshin Norbo said slowly, You will get all the teachings you want. You should settle down here and study sutra and tantric teachings comprehensively. I will treat you as my own son. I felt very happy at the very first sight of you. You will be a great master, spreading Buddha's teachings and benefiting the beings. Choji Yeshin Norbo then gave the young Shirab Jombo all the daily necessities. From then on, at the Larong Buddhism Academy, by the side of his guru master, Kempo Shirab Jombo found his spiritual home. In the following years, Kempo Rinpoche kept offering the three joys of material means, attendance, and dharma practices to Choji Yeshin Norpo, the Lord Master till the attainment of Buddhahood. During the studying years at the academy, Kempo Shirab Jombo devoted all of his time to learning, contemplating, and meditating dharma. For six years, he didn't have a good sleep only occasionally napping with his clothes on when tired. With his devotion to Shoji Yeshin Norbu as great as that to a Buddha, and his perseverance, his merits of precepts, wisdom and compassion kept increasing as the rising moon constantly gains maturity. In the postscript of the Web of Illusion Empowerment Ritual, Blessing of Close Transmission, composed by Shoji Yeshin Norbu, it was written, Kempo Shirab Jombo possesses a broad wisdom on numerous teachings, treaties, and pith instructions. One day in 1986, Chiodi Yeshin Norbo, together with Ali Medro Rinpoche and Kandro Metsua Rinpoche, came to visit Kempo Shirab Jombo's dormitory, which was only a little hut made of earth. The young lama was caught totally unprepared by the unexpected visit of his guru. He immediately stood up and looked humbly and respectfully at Joji Yeshin Norbo. Joji Yeshin Norbo went directly into the room and sat down on Kempo's small bed, saying, Let me observe the origination. Upon these words, he took up a piece of paper from the desk. It was a page from a work of Jyotien's of Kempo Sarab Jombo's. Joji Yeshin Norbo was very pleased when seeing this and said, This is very auspicious. The origination shows you will bring benefit to countless sentient beings by widely spreading the Sultra and Tantric teachings, especially the ultimate Jyotien's teachings. Present in the room also included Lama Dani from the Academy. During the ten odd years since then, Kempo Sharib Jombo has been following Joji Yeshin Norbo, from whom he has received many transmissions, especially the Jyotien teachings. He became the heart son of Joji Yeshin Norbo. Kempo Sharib Jombo often says to his students, I don't have the merits and virtues as people think. I'm only a disciple of Joji Yeshin Norbo. If there is any merit to talk about, then I have to say my only merit is that I have never regarded Yoti Yeshin Norbo as an ordinary person, nor have I made him appear unhappy during the 20 years I have stayed with him. In the Sutra of Final Nirvana, Buddha Shakyamuni said, In the future lives I will incarnate as wisdom masters to benefit the sentient beings. Although Kempo Sharib Jombo is of the Nyingma school, he also has thorough knowledge of teachings of other traditions. In 1986, he accompanied Yoji Yeshin Norbo on a tour to the Dokinham area and visited over 70 monasteries of Nyingma, Giluk, Sankya and Kanyu schools. Since then, monasteries of different traditions have been inviting Kempo Rinpoche to give teachings. In the following 20 years, Kempo Shireb Jombo has been widely spreading the Sultra and Tantric teachings at home and abroad, introducing numerous beings to the paths to enlightenment.
中华民国不会有这个啊，前宋的中心要好，达正的中心要好，运政理念这个北郊要好，黄郊要好，东郊要好，这个包郊要好，天波的这个思想有一部的这个啊，这个啊，万碳下的这个没有什么分别。In December 2004, responding to significant origination, Kempo Shirib Jumbo paid a visit to Malaysia and Singapore. During the 12 days he stayed there, Kempo Sherib Jombo, upon the request of local disciples, held 10 Dharma gatherings, giving various teachings according to capacities of audiences. Tens of thousands of people participated in these gatherings. With his graceful effortlessness and unique sense of humor, Kempo Sharab Jombo gave various instructions, provisional or profound, to over 10,000 people in different circumstances. As a result, true teachings of Buddha were introduced and took root in Malaysia and places nearby, with tantric teachings getting prosperous. Many people have developed a belief in Buddhism, those who have lost their confidence in Buddhism retook refuge. Many people even took Samaya vows. When hearing that some leaders of local Buddhist associations had restricted believers from reliving lives, some even knew nothing about this profound practice, Kempo Shareb Jombo felt strong compassion from within. He immediately corrected these behaviors. Buddhist associations having connections with Kempo Rinpoche have all promised to organize large-scale, life-reliving activities regularly. Yarib Rombo's visit to Malaysia was the succession to Yoji Ishin Norbu Jimmy Putstok visit in 1993. He came to plant again the precious seeds of Dharma in those countries so that countless sentient beings were benefited. No one in the world doesn't want happiness. No one in the world doesn't wish to avoid suffering. However, ever since they first come into this world, people have to endure the pains of birth, sickness, old age and death. Even if there is any joy and laughter, it is as evanescent as morning dew, as elusive as reflection in water. Such is the suffering nature of samsara. Non 藏印的意思是这个啊，第一这个藏是不依生死，不依佛，不依法，不依圣的意思，这个不依生死，不依生死，不依佛，不依佛，不依法，不依法，不依生，不依圣。这个一定要现在八百年。上师讲，呃，皈依呢不是仅仅是个形式，不仅仅是磕个头。那么大家心里边一定要在皈依的时候，一定要心里边深深的发出一个强烈的愿望。从现在开始，呃，生生世世，哪怕遇到生命的危险，也不舍弃三宝，不舍弃上师。
in places where Buddhism is taught, a story is also being told. A long time ago, when Buddha Shakyamuni was alive, there was a lay practitioner in India. One day, on his way out to do business, he was attacked by a gang of robbers who always took killing and doing other evil deeds as pleasure. Having absolutely no belief in Buddhism, they even regarded the natural law of cause and effect as an evil saying. When the mind obscured by ignorance and greed was confronted with the light of nobleness and benevolence, the turbid darkness might become even more obvious. After taking away all of his belongings, the robbers banded the believer, hit him to the ground and deliberately provoked him. If you give up your belief in Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, we will let you go. Otherwise, we'll kill you. Even an ant cherishes its life. In these robbers' view, one could do anything to save its own life. Stepped on the face by the robbers, this believer looked as humble as a dog. But when he heard what the robbers said, his fear and helplessness gradually turned into calmness and a strong sense of nobleness. He then said fearlessly, I have never shown any disrespect to the three jewels, not even verbally. Now you ask me to give up my belief in the three jewels? How could this be possible? His words as pure and peaceful as Lotus, and his deeds proved him to be a noble man who dwarfed the robbers. This was exactly what a genuine Buddhist would do. Because he knew if he gave up the three jewels, he might live dozens of years longer. But he would lose the precious opportunity to attain the utmost freedom from the endless sufferings of samsara. Taking refuge lays a foundation to all the vows and is the source of all the merits and virtues. By taking refuge in Lama and the Three Jewels, one plants a seed of liberation from samsara in his mind stream. He will give up negative deeds and increase positive deeds. He will be protected by Dharma protectors. All of his wishes will be fulfilled and he is always warmed by the light of Three Jewels. He enjoys happiness in his life and will achieve Buddhahood in the future. As said in the Sutra of Sun Treasure, the sentient beings who take refuge in Buddha won't be hurt by demons. He might break his vows or be distracted by afflictive emotions, but he is always moving along the path to enlightenment. The great Indian Pandita, Atishya, reintroduced Buddhism to Tibet in the 11th century. He was omniscient of the immense teachings. According to him, taking refuge was most important at the beginning stage. Since he taught only the benefit of taking refuge at all the Dharma gatherings, he was also called Pandita Refuge. Taking refuge opens the door to the true Dharma. After that, it is devotion to the Master that assures increase of merits and attainment of enlightenment. Once upon a time, there was an old woman who had great confidence in Buddha Shakyamuni. Her son often went to India for business. She asked him to bring her a blessed item of Buddha Shakyamuni to which she could make offerings and prostrate. But the son always forgot to bring her what she had asked. Finally, the mother said, either you bring me something or I will die. So the son, when once again forgot to bring the gift, found a dog's tooth and gave it to his mother, telling her it was the Buddha's relic. 
The old woman took the tooth as a genuine relic of the Buddha. She made offerings and prostrated to it every day with strong devotion. Unexpectedly, many relics really generated from the dog tooth one day. When the old woman was dying, a rainbow appeared in the sky together with other auspicious signs. This story is still told amongst people because it demonstrates the importance of faith and devotion. After taking refuge in Lama and the Three Jewels, as long as the believer holds a firm belief and never gives up Lama and the Three Jewels in this life and all the next lifetimes, he will obtain temporary and utmost benefits and will be liberated from the ocean of suffering and attain Buddhahood eventually. Renunciation is the basis of liberation from samsara, while bodhicitta is fundamental to attainment of enlightenment and is the core of true dharma. ดังนั้นมันเตจองดังจิจมึกเกจลันชงยุอุตเหบลองลงกมอนวาทุจิเดลิปาตาเรมากิสินจิตองจิเฮเรจีโอนาญิเจวิสายอบิมะเบนดอ
Doing virtuous deeds with the motivation of Bodhicitta is the supreme preparation. Proceeding with virtuous deeds without being obstructed by other causes. It is the supreme substance, making the merits increase day by day. It is the supreme dedication. The three supreme points is a profound pith instruction for ordinary people to turn merits and virtues into cause of enlightenment in the degenerate times. When Pandita Atisha was living in Nidhang, three famous geishas of that time invited him to give authentic teachings. Atisha said, There are a lot of schools of Buddhism as well as of other religions, but all are based on discriminating mind. These discriminations are of no use at all. Life is transient. We need to summarize the essential teachings now. One geisha asked, how do we summarize the essential teachings then? Atisha answered, We should accumulate merits and wisdom through diligent practice for the sake of countless beings with true compassion and bodhicitta. Virtues to all the beings and wish for universal achievement of enlightenment. We should know all phenomena are like dreams and illusions with the nature of emptiness. Therefore, without bodhicitta, Without understanding the essence of Dharma practice, knowledge, view or practice, no matter how profound it is, will have little help to perfect realization. May joy and causes of joy be with all beings forever. May suffering and causes of suffering be away from all beings forever. May all beings enjoy happiness of no suffering forever. Maintaining a pleasant mind, may all beings be free from greed and anger forever, abiding in the state of equanimity.
to arouse bodhicitta in those who have not generated it, to make it increase where it has arisen, Kempo Sharab Jombo has been teaching people to relive captive lives wherever he gives discourses at home or abroad. As a condition to an accept an invitation to preside over a Dharma gathering, Kempo Rinpoche always requires local participants to promise abandoning killing. This has become an Chisusakunto 和光明人, 大家, 我的天, Nagarjuna said in the treatise on the great perfection of wisdom, there is no evil greater than in killing, and there is no virtue greater than in saving lives. Tiene
Kempo Rinpoche spends the money offered by his disciples in saving captive animals like yaks every year. <laughs> These saved animals are given to poor herdsmen. By taking care of the animals, they not only make a living, but also get the merits and virtues of reliving lives, thus having a seed of liberation sowed in their mind stream. By the effort of Kempo Shirab Jombo, countless animals have been rescued, and at the same time, the fragile ecosystem of the Tibetan plateau is protected. In recent years alone, billions of captive animals have been released by Kempo Sirhab Jombo outside the Tibetan plateau. Numerous people have participated in these virtuous activities.
Heilongjiang in northeast China to Guangdong in the south, from Shanghai along the East Sea to Lhasa in the snowlands in the west, Kempo Shereb Rongbo's footprints have covered most of the country during recent years to lead life-relieving activities. Even in foreign countries as Malaysia, under the influence of Kempo Rinpoche, many local Buddhism associations have started to organize regular life-relieving activities. Countless beings have been freed from under the butcher's knife, protected and blessed by the great compassion of Kempo Rinpoche. They are now back to their home in the nature, enjoying the rest of their life in the blue sky, clear sea, or green mountain pastures. Joji Yeshi Norbo had said, A noble character is the foundation of all sutra and tantric teachings. Kempo Sarib Rombo often says to his disciples, Being a good person comes before studying Dharma. When you become a good man, you are ready on the path to enlightenment. Well known for his noble character and great compassion, Kempo Sarib Rombo has been frequently invited by domestic and foreign Buddhist organizations to give teachings. <laughs> Especially in Tibetan areas, various monasteries and localities are inviting him to give teachings and empowerments. Chile 
Chelsea da bu konu var. Bu şey hukuk tutsa o, lama kaydan cihazı bir çürgün. Bu an sözü ona. Sen gibi bir çift gibi bir tanrı, sen gibi bir çift gibi bir tanrı, gibi bir tanrı, gibi bir tanrı, bu şey tutan ne bu şeyden zor bir şey kararıyor. Gibi bir tanrı, 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 gibi Sarı adı nöre, doğga bütün eta, kubi adı. En kempo kisko zor, kuna söndü dene. Eta adı nöre, adı nöre, kira adı nöre, kumba. Luba çöpü, kuda çeke zor, dene kempo hodir, dene kuda hodir, çenda adı nöre, kumda adı nöre. Dene da hayda keke adı nöre, müzik tanji adı nöre, kumda adı nöre. Eee, neşir adı nöre, eee. Kimpo Sareb Jombo always teaches people to give up killing as well as other negative deeds, such as smoking, drinking alcohol, fighting and stealing. Out of their strong devotion to Kempo Rinpoche, numerous people have sworn before him to abandon these evil deeds forever. Besides sowing the seeds of liberation in disciples' mind stream, Kempo Rinpoche also helps to improve their personalities. It proves that Supreme Tantra has no conflict between Dharma practices and worldly life. About ten years ago, while giving an examination on Jyotien practice to some Tukuls and Kempos at the retreat center of Lorong Five Sciences Buddhism Academy, Jyoti Yeshinobo gave Kempo Shirab Jombo a video camera. Since then, this camera has recorded Kempo Shirab Jombo's activities of spreading Buddhist teachings and benefiting all the sentient beings. Let's open our heart that has been closed for so long. Let go of self-attachment and greed. 
Let's follow the steps of Kempo Sareb Jombo to love and benefit others with the compassion and wisdom of Buddhist teachings. May all the sentient beings have a better future.